Hello, everyone. Welcome to Game Junk Prototype Episode 16, recording on June 12th, 2020. We're going to be talking about the future of gaming, uh, <laughs> as dictated by Sony's video yesterday, including the reveal of the PlayStation 5. My name is Frank. My name is Sean. My name is Andrew. And before we get into the show, I just wanted to remind people that uh, Film Junk released our Spike Lee Premium podcast this week, and all... I mean, it's available for a minimum donation of a dollar. We encourage people to give more, but all donations will be uh, donated to the Act Blue Racism and Police Brutality Funds uh, campaign, I guess, which is a collective of charities and different things. So please check it out, filmjunk.bandcamp.com, and hopefully we can raise a lot of money and have a positive impact. Yeah, maybe I'll just quickly mention too. I don't know if uh, did either of you guys check out that itch.io bundle. Oh that's yeah, out good there. Call. I did. Oh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like I don't, I don't know the exact number anymore, but I think it's like over seven hundred different games for five dollars. Yeah. You can donate more, but it all goes to charity. Yeah, let uh, me get the link or like a kind of uh, itch.io a uh, bundle for racial justice and equality. And I mean, they they changed their goals a bunch of times. Um, it, I think it was at 1.2 million. The, I think the goal changed to 5 million and it's now at 5.7 million. Wow. Uh, 550,000 contributors. And there's, uh, yeah, like 700, 740 projects, games, uh, art assets, a lot of really good games. And a pretty awesome thing. And the response has been exceptional. So yeah, definitely check that out. I think it's all DRM free games. It's not steam keys or anything like that. Uh, but I mean, what a deal. I mean, it's a, it's a great cause and an amazing set of games. So get on it if you haven't. Uh, and they've been adding more stuff as well Yeah, as they go. So I don't, I don't even know what the latest batch of stuff they've added, but just keep an eye because some notable stuff. Celeste is on there, which was a game of the year contender. Mm -hmm. uh, Night in the woods. Yeah. Night in the woods. What was the, the game you recently played? I saw was on there. Huck. Um, short uh, hike, short hike. Short hike. Yeah. Oxen also, free. Uh, Oxen, Oxen free. free yeah. Another one overland, which just came out from Finji not too long ago. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mortician's Tale is uh, from a team out of Toronto. And for all the hackers in the house, Quadrilateral Cowboy. Oh, yes. Also that 2064 Read Only Memories game. Mm -hmm. A lot of good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Check it out. People should be all over this thing. Uh, it almost feels too cheap. Yeah, so it does. It, they probably could have set it at like thirty dollars and got just as many downloads. Well, the average contribution is ten dollars and fifty cents or around there. So people are donating yep. more, which is good. Uh, okay, so let's get into uh, the PlayStation video, I guess, video presentation. PlayStation Five reveal, Frank. Reveal. It it's was the revealed gaming uh <laughs> now i was pretty excited for this we did our top five last week so we're gonna do our top five things that actually got announced mm -hmm. i would say we were all probably i was probably the least disappointed in terms of our top five lists and what actually ended up in the show got new house mark game horizon mm -hmm. no yeah. rocks the announcements so uh no I think I got nothing right. <laughs> <laughs> I did a few other Air things we TV, mentioned. Horizon, that happened. Horizon Forbidden West, or not Horizon 2, would be on the press conference, but uh, still remains to be seen if that is a launch title. I, I'm thinking doubtful at this point. But, yeah. you know, it's going the Avatar approach. When you've done the best game or movie ever, where do you go next? Underwater. Just makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Okay, so let's talk first the look of the console, which has been, you know, commented on a lot. Very divisive. People feel different ways about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I'll let you guys go first. I, I was just well, gonna say they should get Emilio Estevez to be the spokesperson for the Flying V, because it's shaped <laughs> like the big old, you know. Mighty Ducks flying V. Um, I, I would say I that is the thing I like the most about the design of the console. The fact that like the five PlayStation five V Roman numeral, obviously I, I'm assuming that's intentional, but uh, <laughs> Let's I hope. thought that I thought that was a, a nice little touch. Overall, right. I would say I don't hate it. Uh, I think I like the console design more than the controller, but I mean, we'll get to details. Overall, what do you guys think? Go ahead. So I, I like it. It's cool. It's interesting. It's kind of like a little art piece, you know. I, I get it. Like it's interesting that they're they're putting a little bit of effort into this. I don't know if there's actually a practical reason for having it shaped the way it is, but you know, yeah, it would probably look cool sitting next to your TV. The problem I have is that I don't have uh, downstairs, I don't have like a TV stand. I sort of have stuff built into the wall and I'm already concerned about the Xbox series X, whether that's going to fit. Now I'm concerned about whether this is going to fit. Well, they both go sideways, right? I think that's official. It looks like for sure this one, there were images of it sideways. So I was interested to see, I don't know if these are real. I mean, I saw some images online, um, that could have been made by people on the internet, but going sideways, putting it on its side, the disc drive goes at the bottom and it has like a kind of a circular stand, obviously because it's not an even side that like balances it out and stuff like that, which I'm less of a fan of the sideways version of the console. Um, yeah. Now, thankfully I've moved everything into my bedroom with a stand where I can put both things on top of a stand And so I'm willing to live with this for now and put both uh, like lengthwise, which is probably better for ventilation. I'm talking myself into these consoles. I I think it is. It (laughs) looks like there's a lot of vents on the top that would, you know, have the best impact if it was upright. And I can see like playing God of War again. I forgot how loud that PS4 can get. Even a PS4 Pro, it is insane. Yeah. Uh, how loud it is over the game. Sometimes I have to crank my TV just to hear what's going on. I have uh, to play with headphones now, or I can't hear the game. <laughs> it's so loud. I just uh, have a base PS4 though, but still. Uh, Huck, how about you? I thought it looked okay. I mean, I had similar thoughts on the sideways aspect. I do like that they came out with the disc and the digital version right away. And I prefer the look of the digital one just for the symmetry of it. Agreed. The disc Program version. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Got that math equation going. Uh, the Yeah, the disc one kind of looks like they just tacked on this disc drive kind of like on the bottom section of it, and which is fine. It looks okay. Uh, but I don't think I've bought a physical disc in a, a couple years. So the idea of being able to just buy a digital one for cheaper right away. That's nice. I also, I wouldn't mind. I I mean, I don't have a problem with repurchasing any of the games that I currently have on disc that I may want to play again because they'll probably be super cheap. Uh, So that's not a big deal. Or getting like PS Now or whatever whatever I need to do to play them, which I probably will never have time for anyways. So overall, I would say I like it. I think the controller still it looks fine. It looks comfortable. Uh, the then they announced also the like headphones and the charging uh, what, the charging station. And I think there was one more thing. Oh, the remote, the TV and, remote, and the camera. Yeah, and the media. Oh, remote. and the camera. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the one thing I wasn't sure about when I kind of looked closer. It looked like, like at the front cover, it looked like there was, like, I only saw one USB port, and then there was, like, another port that 
almost looked like a different type of USB port, but it didn't quite look right. And then it almost looked like there was two SD slots at the bottom. Uh, and that didn't really make sense to me that they would only have so few USB ports. Now, it was kind of like quickly going by in the video and they didn't really like spend a lot of time on it. So I, I could be totally off, but I, I wasn't sure exactly what all the ports on the front are for. I don't know if, if, hmm. any, if they've actually announced what those are on the front, but they didn't quite all look like USB ports. Does uh, anyone have an idea? The, the quick roundup, I don't know if this is accurate or not, uh, but power button, eject button on the Blu-ray edition, USB-C, USB-A, and um, that's, that's the stuff on the front. Okay, so those two little slits I thought were SD slots must be like power and reset. I think so, yeah. And then, yeah, that that makes sense. USB C that one that one did look like a USB C, right? Um, and I, yeah, I guess it's in the same idea, the they've announced that it ha- is going to be a 4K Blu-ray player, which mm-hmm. yeah, PS4 Pro was not. So it's that's probably one of the one of the few reasons to get the the physical the version with the drive in it. I mean, I'm so Huck. Are you like I know Frank's already committed to digital. I'm not fully committed yet. Oh, you're not. Well, I mean, I'm going to have the option. I'm going to have to make a decision like based on price. Mm. I mean, if I get more storage space, I could see them having, they're the same cost. uh, But one has a higher storage potentially. Right. Yeah. Maybe not. But I'm, I'm really on the fence right now. Like I'm interested to see what the price difference is going to be. But I mean, I just, the only reason why I wouldn't go full digital and maybe this is a thing in the past. Those E three pre order sales are pretty good, but if they're not happening this year. Who knows if they're ever going to happen again? Not a game changer for me. I'm uh, I've bought every game digitally. I mean, I am. There are some games. I'm assuming this is going to have to get addressed in future consoles. That you buy, like physical disc. Like you can only get them with a physical disc. Uh, like some of the Guitar Hero games and even the latest, like the latest one, Guitar Hero Live or whatever it was called, and a few other things always come with the disc. So I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping this you... leads towards a shift towards digital bundles as well for stuff that require peripherals and anything like that. I imagine if that if they do have something where they ship with a physical disc, they'd probably just give you a digital code along with it. Or... Yeah, maybe you would be able Make to buy a, a digital specific version. Specific edition, yeah. Um, so I hope I'm assuming that that's going to become more of a thing, which I which I'm in favor of. Uh, I'm, I'm personally more on favor of the digital, even more now that both companies seem to have embraced the backwards compatibility. So by buying the digital version, you now have it tied to your account in in theory until the companies implode. So. Like I like that aspect of not having to worry about tracking where my discs are or, you know, pulling them out or whatever. I could just, you know, know they're on my Sony account or on my Microsoft account, which is really, really a, a perk for me. Like it's kind of the same with Steam. You kind of have that now whatever whenever you upgrade, which is nice. I I guess we should talk about that. Is it confirmed that everything is backwards compatible? I know in the previous video the tech video, they talked about that stuff, but this really didn't address backwards compatibility, at least in the way that the series X has. Yeah. They're, they're not, uh, leaning into it as much as Microsoft, which is kind of weird. You would think they would want to be like, Hey, whatever Microsoft's got, we got that and more. They, and yeah, they did seem to say previously that most PS4 games, the vast majority, I think is something like that is what they said will be backwards compatible but it wasn't really mentioned at this event. But I think it was designed to be more about the games and a ton of games. And overall, I think that's what it did great. So many new things, uh, some third party, some first party, but stuff that I hadn't heard about before. And I was pretty excited by almost everything. Even some of the weirder stuff I saw potential in. Uh, But compared to the game showcase of the Xbox video, I mean, it blew it away. In my opinion, I had already been predicting. So it was over after this video. Uh, I stand by that. I think the, the console war is over. 
for the next gen. <laughs> or I shouldn't say it's not the war's not over. Certainly not over. Uh, victory has been decided. Well, I mean, it's interesting because obviously, like we've talked about this before, but it does seem like the last generation war was kind of decided in a you know first impression thing. Absolutely. Sony, Xbox came out like talking about all their TV tie-in stuff and like net always on network stuff and people didn't like that and then sony was like yeah we don't have any of those problems and then that was it it was done and the impressions had been formed even if microsoft later backed off on a lot of that stuff and now microsoft's first press press conference there was some cool stuff but they didn't have all their big they didn't have a halo they didn't have did they have they didn't have gears right so like they didn't have a lot of big like first party games i think because they were saving them for another press conference but yeah i believe there was no could, first, no first party games at all in the first video so that that could be the thing that kills them right off the bat they just you know people have already have those two first impressions in their head and now sony is ahead in the game and microsoft's playing catch up already i yeah, think I'm microsoft sure. announced they're gonna have the first party games uh july 22nd or something like that though yeah, I, the one difference, like I think, where they could make make up some ground, would be with when the games actually launch. In terms of a launch for the console, everything was pretty non-specific in this press conference. A lot of stuff for 2021, 2022. Um, there weren't many games there that I think were going to like ship with the console. And Spider-Man people, Holiday 2020. That's pretty huge. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we'll get to that game for sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they, if Xbox comes out and, and says we're launching with new halo and it looks amazing and something else definitely closer than it is now, but I still think with the, their loading technology and IP that they've shown, I, I, I think it's going to be tough. Yeah. It's just weird. Cause you know, like I think, Obviously, the marketing is a thing that kind of goes over a period of time. You want to space out your announcements. You want to kind of stay in people's minds. But I just don't understand why that was the thing that Microsoft led with, unless they just weren't ready to show some of the other things yet. But uh, could could be the killer. I don't know. I mean, it could be a calculated strategy as well. They know they have games, and they know Sony always reacts to them. So like a counter punching type of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I would say the one difference is we're still in a pandemic and people are like looking for stuff to get excited about or to latch onto. So if you had big stuff you could announce, I would think you would want to do it now more than ever. Yeah, definitely. People are paying more attention right now. It seems like I, Huck was mentioning before the show, like game sales increased. How, what was it? 152% in May. Percent, yeah. In so the U.S. People are thing, getting into games probably that weren't before, and they're deciding what they're going to do uh, with an upcoming console. The one thing I'm kind of like interested in for the marketing aspect is that so Microsoft uh, from the outside doesn't appear to have many games like really high quality games that are going to launch with the series x now also like frank was saying before with the ps5 there wasn't really too much that said like holiday 2020 i think like godfall spider-man which there's no way spider-man is not also going to be on the ps4 because they basically already had that engine running so that's going to be a cross platform game for sony and, you know, like, what else is there? They don't, like, Horizon 2, like you were saying, Frank, they they would have said holiday 2020 for that if they had it. Yeah. So they, they do not. That is definitely not coming out at launch. And just, I don't know, looking closely, that Bug Snacks game, uh, Godfall, The Far Shore, and... I think that's it. I think that's all I had written down. Oh, and well, the Spider-Man. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not really that strong of like, uh, hey, look at our PS5 exclusives going on. And I have a feeling that Microsoft 
has I th- Microsoft already said that they are going to have no exclusive Series X games, right? Everything's going to be kind of like backwards on the Xbox One. So, I think it's still determined. There are rumors that Halo is going to be a launch title. Okay, and exclusive to Series X? Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, yeah, I think they've kind of said Halo is going to be designed for that hardware. I could be okay. wrong. They, they, know- did, they did say something to that effect of like the first two years, nothing will be exclusive to Series X. Everything will be also playable on Xbox One. But yeah, uh, uh, hmm. at, <laughs> at the risk of maybe breaking NDA, uh, I know that Microsoft is doing like a big push to make sure that it's really easy for developers to go kind of on everything. So I, I, ha- I think that's their plan is just try to keep an Xbox ecosystem, no matter yeah. what box you're playing on. And you could kind of go back and forth however you want. And the only difference is the quality. It doesn't really matter. You're now more dealing with like Xbox as the brand rather than the series X versus the Xbox one. Whereas I think Sony is still trying to say like, this is our next gen machine. You have to upgrade now if you want to play this awesome stuff. Whereas I think Microsoft is taking more of a, more of a standoff, like, you know, upgrade whenever you want, as long as you're in our ecosystem, like get game pass for a dollar still, you know, just come hang out with us. We're cool. And also, I don't know if you guys have, well, you probably have, but like in all of Microsoft's marketing so far, they've been almost exclusively pl- playing up the backwards compatible a- aspect of it. And like your games everywhere and all that stuff, like play on your PC, play on your tablet, stream it with the X cloud. They're playing up that aspect of it. They're barely uh, playing up how powerful the series X is. And, you know, Sony's coming out swinging the SD or the super fast hard drive, the SSD. They're swinging the 3D audio. Microsoft's barely talking about their SSD. And I I don't think it's like, I mean, it's faster, no doubt. But I don't think it's like going to be, you know, a, a really big difference between the two. They're both really fast. Obviously, I think we did the comparison before that Sony's is like, twice as fast or something like that but i mean it's still reading exceptionally fast regardless so well that microsoft is definitely going towards a service-based approach i'm assuming that is uh, a strategy that projects years and years into the future versus like maybe five years where perhaps there are no consoles they could launch xbox game services on Nintendo platforms, I think, would be first. Maybe even Sony platforms, televisions at some point. So um, I think they definitely have different strategies. Sony has always tended to cater more to, like, I don't want to, hardcore gamers or something like that that are kind of traditional and want to be able to trade in their games and stuff like that. And uh, they, they tend to lean towards decisions that reflect a traditional console structure. So I'm really not surprised by the differences as they start to diverge a bit. I think it could be interesting to see what people gravitate towards, especially younger people who are used to kind of on-demand type service structure for all the stuff they they use. So it's it will be interesting. I'm obviously going to buy both. Uh, I I'm excited, more excited for the PlayStation. I'll be perfectly honest by by a long shot. Does the uh... Do you guys have a 4K UHD player already? Yes. Okay. So that's not really a sales feature for you guys. But... Four of them. <laughs> <laughs> Four of them. No, three. Three. I, I, yeah, I sold one. <laughs> so, I mean, that might be a sales thing for other people. But, like, for me, I would rather pay for, like, an upgraded streaming service that allows me to get 4K than, than buying a physical disk drive myself. So... Right. Yeah. Okay. I don't have much else to say about the console itself other than I, I guess I like the fact that there's a media remote and the charging dock. I like the suite of stuff. Give me a bundle. Give me an everything bundle. Day one. I'm in. <laughs> Thousand bucks. In. <laughs> <laughs> but I, have, I do uh... hope there is. I know I talked about not being crazy about the white console design. 
I just find white consoles like start to, I don't know if it's just my house or the places I've lived, but they c- discolor over time. And like, obviously you're, the old yeah, Super Nintendo thing and all that, like you're not wrong about that. Like, I think the, like a, a black device tends to pick up more dust and stuff, but the white ones, just the color gets weird over time. And yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm assuming there will be different colors and versions of the console later. So, uh, I'll probably be fine with changing or upgrading it at some point. Yeah. I just had one other quick thing to mention, a kind of a funny thing. I don't know if you guys saw it. There was this conspiracy theory going around, uh, some people were commenting and and they thought that the presenters in this event were CG. Did you hear that? One of them looked like it. Really? I only, with one, what company was it? I think it was the house smart guy. I'm like, I feel like they're going to reveal I'm running on a PlayStation five. (laughs) Well, that's what some people were saying. They're like, when it says everything you're about to see is running on a PlayStation, even the interviews (laughs) are running on a PlayStation. (laughs) But I, you know what it is, though? I think I read one theory that explains it that kind of makes sense. Like, obviously, everybody had to shoot this stuff at home, like all their little interviews and stuff. So they might have gone in with some post-production stuff afterwards to clean it up because I think everybody kind of had the same background and, and the same kind of look. So they might have done some weird post-production thing to clean everything up that just made everybody look shiny and fake. We need to get uh, Chiel to break this down. Yeah. Like digital artifacting and other <laughs> shit is always going on. They removed all that green. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> let's get on to the top five announcements, our personal top five. And if we need it to touch on a few more things after that, we can do that. But uh, let's start it off with Huck City's number five. Uh, my number five was Spider Man, the Spider Man announcement. Uh, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, I think it's kind of cool that they're expanding it. I think it's been announced now that this is not a full-fledged additional game. It's more like an extended DLC. It, uh, I, so they, they it, said uh, it's, it is standalone, standalone. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not DLC for the other game, but whether or not it's got a lot of new mechanics or anything like that, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, it reminds like, me immediately of First Light because I yeah, just played First, First Light. Light. And uh, what was the Uncharted one? Lost, Lost Legacy. Lost Legacy. So uh, I'll say it's on my list. I won't say where, but while we're talking about it, I like that. I yeah. like smaller experiences. I really enjoyed playing First Light. And I don't necessarily need you know a 50-hour game, especially after I just played Spider-Man. I'm interested in perhaps like I watched a video with uh, Ted price. That's the insomniac guy, right? Yeah. And they were talking about things they learned from the game and from the Spider-Man game. And one of them was like the side missions and how kind of repetitive some of that stuff can become and how they can get better at delivering content like that. So I'm interested to see what they do in terms of that in this game and maybe less is more approach to some of this stuff. Uh, but that's what has me excited about it. I, I'm, I'm really pumped for this game. Frank, you played through all the DLC, right? Uh, yeah, I've done it all, baby. Yeah. So I didn't really like the DLC. I fell off in the third one. I felt it was kind of just mostly all the same. It's, it kind of strayed away from what I thought made the full game really strong and kind of went more into the, just the beat em ups and challenge missions. Whereas I liked more of the unique kind of like Peter Parker and Spider-Man stuff that they had us do in the the full game. So I hope that they've kind of regrouped and they drop this more in the vein of like a smaller full game rather than a, a larger DLC mission. And I think that if they drop this at like 30 or 40 bucks instead of 60 or whatever the full price of a PS5 game is going to be. I think that could also be really attractive to people that would want to buy it. I wouldn't be surprised to see a bundle or something like that, where if you pre-order it, you get the current version of Spider-Man for PS4 or something like that. And yeah, that, that upcoming thing as well, probably once they're ready to announce back compatibility 
stuff if it's in line with that decision that that could make uh, a few dollars i think Mm -hmm. sean uh yeah my number five is i we did touch on this briefly i think last week the sack boy little big planet adventure or whatever it's called um I mean, I'm looking forward to it, but it's interesting because it almost addresses exactly what we said, Frank, yeah, which is that the other the other games are so focused on letting you create and build things that the actual platforming and stuff is not as strong. But now it just seems like they're just making a straight up platform game without all the other stuff around it. Even the issue I complained about, which is the kind of awkward uh, depth issues with that game where it's just a slight depth is now kind of alleviated by camera positioning and stuff like that. And clearly they had a uh, sack boy that they were like, what can we like use this popular character in a different way? And I think it's perfect. And I, it's not my, my top five, but I'm excited for it. And if anything, I was really reminded of super Mario 3d land. Is that the Wii U one or world uh, world? Okay. I think. I think that, uh, I was I don't reminded know. of that game, um, like based on what was going on there, more so than an open world thing like Odyssey. And I loved that game. So I think uh, if they're using that for design cues and what to do, I'm pretty excited for it as well. Mm-hmm. Good to see some platforming, though. There's also the, I'm assuming, non VR uh, Astrobots Playhouse or playroom i think astrobots playroom yeah i that's not on my list uh i read something about it afterwards apparently it's a free game that comes with the playstation and it's kind of a like it shows off what the controller can do so it may not be like Mm. a full-on game well that's what the there was the playroom that launched with ps4 as well by the same developers which was showing off the camera a bit if you bought the camera and uh, used the same like mascots and stuff like that. So, right. Yeah. I, I, I kind of got that vibe. It looked bigger than a free game, but that's cool if it's free. Mm -hmm. All right. My number five is returnal, not the, uh, greatest name. I will admit that (laughs) (laughs) there's a few bad names that were announced yesterday, but But that's the new house smart game, which is third person, which is much bigger than what they've done before. But to me, it looked like an interesting concept, which was, at least in a few glimpses of gameplay, a bullet hell 3D game. Where, it, like, a lot of bullets on screen, very fast-paced action, which they're known for. And I'm curious to see how they take their kind of... what's typical gameplay, I guess, that they've used in many different versions and turn it into uh, a 3D perspective game, third person. So I'm I'm really excited for that. This wasn't on my list. I do think Housemark makes some good games, so I'm not going to write it off completely, but all of the like gameplay they did show looked very similar to me. It all looked... You know, I it all reminded me of like the same weapon and everything like that. It didn't look like they were doing any, anything interesting in the all the gameplay they did show. It looked like she was just kind of like running forward or running backward and shooting at something high up, kind of midway up the screen, kind of thing. Well, so, where my excitement came from with those images was, I think it was like these kind of purple bullets that I saw a bunch of times, and there was a bunch of them. And the other game I thought of was Ikaruga. Uh, <laughs> in terms of the pace and the look of all that stuff. So I was more, I can see what you're saying. I was more tantalized by what they could do uh, with some of those ideas or shooter ideas, because a lot of yeah, third person yeah. shooters are more about cover. And we talked about this a lot with doom being more open and fast paced and encouraging aggressive play. This looks like it could be a new spin that I would say looks highly influenced by Ikaruga, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I think I heard this mentioned on another podcast, but I think they were saying that it looks like it could be a roguelike, hmm. mainly because of what they talk about with the story elements. Well, there's a so, lot of games, death loop games, and yes, what's called death loop. Uh, mm-hmm. So that is definitely a new trend in gaming, which obviously 
is basically what roguelike or roguelites are about, right? Some kind of loop. So I don't hate it. It's getting maybe a little tired, but I have to say those game look those games look decent. One thing with this one, did you guys find that the main character looked a lot like Gwendolyn Christie from Game of Thrones and uh, Star Wars? I did think that a bit. Not a, not a lot, but I definitely... I was just that. looking now whether that's been confirmed if she actually is the actor in it, but I've, I found one other article that said, yeah, the character looks like her. So I... I assume it's not because they probably would have announced that, but just kind of weird. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of the final fantasy movie. Was that spirits within Mm -hmm. and the main character looked like Ben Affleck in CG form. I just kind (laughs) of, so there's a lot of that obviously where they, well, last draw inspiration from something. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. With Ellen page and stuff like that. So they, they definitely, I think use celebrities as models for design and switch it up a bit. They don't look exactly like them, but that happens pretty often. Yeah. All right. Number four. Uh, Okay. My number four, I'm going to switch up my list a bit. Uh, Project Agatha, I believe it was called. Was that right? It's your number four. Oh, Athia. 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 The Square Enix. It looks really pretty. Now, I, I wasn't, I kind of just slotted this in because I, I took off my joke number one that I had. I put in a real game. So I think, I think that the fast locomotion looked interesting. And it looks like there's some sort of weird, like fantasy magic monsters going on, which could be neat. Really, it's hard to tell what this is, but it definitely looked impressive. And I believe this did say that is, is it is a PS5 exclusive. So it's obviously. Weird. You know what I was reminded of the most during that game? No. The Unreal 5 demo. Like, like it oh, looked yeah. better version of that game. Huh. Yeah. From gameplay, not necessarily like technology wise better, but very, it reminded me of the character. And like you said, the very fast locomotion and flying through stuff. Yeah. That's it for me. Uh, okay. My number four was a game that I really don't know too much about, but I thought it looked cool in the trailer. Uh, Little Devil Inside. It looked kind mm-hmm. of like a Zelda esque action RPG, but I thought it had a really cool art style. Are you and, serious uh, right now? Yeah. You've, ne- you've never heard of this game before? No. It was announced a few years ago, right? Five. I supported Five it years. on Kickstarter. Five <laughs> oh yeah. Years ago. Maybe I supported it too, and I don't remember. <laughs> oh, you'd have. I don't know. You would have gotten update number forty-two. Although your email is flooded, so you probably wouldn't have seen it. Got to get on. <laughs> but uh, I remember yeah. you. I remember you uh, going in on. Yeah, this. I was so pumped when they did their first reveal trailer, which was the same art style and the dragon. Oh my god, it looks so good. And I've been patiently waiting with my uh investment or contribution so i couldn't believe it i was i'm finally gonna get this game and even better i've already paid for it i'm just gonna get it on playstation 5 i better be (laughs) able to get a playstation 5 Uh, yeah i mean you know you never know like you might just get the steam version or something if there is one but i'm i don't remember what tier i subscribe to but i'm pretty sure i Got to pick my version. I better be that. Like, it's been five years. Give me the option. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy just because, like, the whole Kickstarter thing kind of faded away. But and and a lot of games just didn't happen. But this one has just been going on for a long time, I guess. With very infrequent updates, and I was literally at the point where I'm like, oh, I I kind of knew this when it's I paid. For I'm it's like this... we you on their uh, yeah. Kickstarter page. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow! I am aware <laughs> of uh, how long it's been, but I, I still think it looks good. I love the art style, so yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested. I'm just glad it's not going to be money thrown away at, at some level. Which yeah. I, when I back things, there is a part of me that is fully prepared for it to be <laughs> like gone. This money, I will never see anything with this money. But I mean, 
I've put money in slot machines at casinos. Like it's, it's a gamble, you know, mm -hmm. it's the That's way like me with uh, star citizen. That bad yep. boy is never coming out. <laughs> I think it's seven years for that one. That hasn't come out yet. Oh yeah. no, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> but there was back to back announcements that were like for me, it was little devil inside and I couldn't believe it. And I texted Paul from creative bites. Cause uh, I remember talking about it when we were working on Embers of Miram and doing the Kickstarter. I'm like, it's finally happening. <laughs> it, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna get released. And then right after that, Zion Williamson, Pelicans jersey, boom, PlayStation. I was gonna five. ask about that. <laughs> this is made for me. <laughs> oh, I am a PlayStation fan, man. That was well, that was the best sweat simulator I've ever seen. I. Might have to buy this NBA game if Zion is the, the cover athlete. My number four. And this one kind of caught me by surprise. Although I figured out really early in the teaser what it was based on art style stuff. Resident Evil 8 Village. And I think part of the reason why it's my number four is strictly because it put Village up and had the, the three eyes or mm -hmm. Roman numeral eyes that turned into eight. And I kind of knew it. You had seen the umbrella logo. I knew it was resident evil eight before the umbrella logo. Uh, but I just like the switch in scenery. This kind of Gothic horror. I think it looks cool. Uh, it looks like it's a bigger scale than resident evil seven, which I have been meaning to try out and get back into. Cause I played RE two and RE three remakes and like those. So uh, I got to, got to play number seven, but, Looked pretty cool. I'm in. I'm interested. I've got a lot of Resident Evil games to play right now, but uh, <laughs> just give it up. I'm always interested. Look I had no Resident idea what Evil, that was. Resident uh, Evil on rail shooters on Apple Arcade. That's more up your alley. <laughs> there you go. I beat a few once upon a time, Frank. Once upon a time. I'm just, you know, ribbing you here, Sean. Prove no me wrong. Beat was. RE2. <laughs> We'll see. It's five hours. I'm on, I'm working on The Last of Us right now. I committed to that. I'm working on that. I guess reviews for Last of Us 2 are out today and pretty divisive as well. I'm, I just looked at scores and one-sentence synopses because I want to have no spoilers whatsoever. Well, to be fair, you say divisive, but I mean, the Metacritic is extremely high. It's just that a lot of the negative reviews don't give scores. Correct. So. And the major, I would say major outlets that don't give scores. I didn't read the whole thing, but they did not look as favorable as other ones. Right. All right, moving on to number three. Uh, my number three is the Second Horizon game. And Forbidden I don't... Forbidden West. Frank will go on about this, so I'll just wait until it's his number one to go into it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my number three was already talked about Spider-Man Miles Morales. Um, I mean, I, I agree with a lot of what Frank said. I, I like the thought of this being a little more streamlined, a little less repetitiveness. And I just like that it's focusing on a different character. Hopefully that gives it a little bit of a different feel. And the fact that it's this year is exciting. Yes, definitely. My number three, and this was probably the biggest surprise of any new thing, just in terms of getting me excited, was Kenna Bridge of Spirits, which mm -hmm. the first thing I thought of when I saw this stuff was Beyond Good and Evil. Like the original Beyond Good and Evil, it looked like an updated version of that, especially the, the character did a dive roll, and it was almost the exact same animation from my memory from Beyond Good and Evil. So I feel like there, it is using that game perhaps as homage or using it to create something similar, but I thought it looked amazing. The, the, the arrow shooting and all the gameplay stuff for what looks to be a pretty small studio that I hadn't heard of before. I thought it looked really good. I liked all the, the art design, the style of everything. I am in on this game. Yeah. It's oh, my number two. 
it kind of had a pick Pikmin vibe too, right? That was where there was these other little creatures that you could influence and Yeah. I think I was a little concerned because I believe they said in the interview that they have a animation and film background. Definitely. I don't I didn't really look into it any further than that, but I was I was kind of concerned like this looks a little too good. Maybe this isn't actually any gameplay at all. This is just like one big giant animated feat. Uh, but I think they did definitely show some gameplay in there. I don't think they were just showing all animation, but I think that like I would say 60 to 70 percent of the trailer was probably just a nicely animated scene they made up. But I agree with what Frank was saying. Looks really good. Looks fun. Looks like uh, it could be interesting, like some sort of like Horizon uh, almost Tone down, light horizon tone down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, horizon light uh, game, and I, I'm also really interested in it. I will say it is on the Epic Store already, and its release oh, really? date is 2020. And the developers are Ember Lab. Hmm. So, yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned like how much gameplay was in there because you know obviously Microsoft got a lot of criticism for most of their event being cinematic stuff and not a lot of gameplay. And now granted Sony didn't flat out say, Hey, we're going to show you gameplay. I think that's the big problem. Microsoft said it's going to be a gameplay reveal. And then they didn't show a lot of gameplay, but I think Sony, I mean, there was a couple of games that they actually showed gameplay of, but it was a lot of cinematic stuff where I was kind of still having trouble figuring out what the game actually is. I was like, Thinking with a lot of games, I like the look, I like the premise, but what is it? And I didn't quite know yet. I, I can't really play it now, but on their website, they have, there was, I think this went around a few years ago, uh, Majora's Mask concept video. Oh, that was these guys, this Ember Lab place? If so, yeah. Uh, uh, I think that rings a bell. Oh yeah, yeah totally. And the they got merch on there. Apparently those little creatures are called rots or rots. I don't know, but they, uh, they got figures, t-shirts. Gotta get it. Gotta buy. They're thinking this ahead. Is... They're thinking ahead. Bye, bye, bye. Only 23 t-shirts left in stock. Gotta. Merchandising. Merchandising. <laughs> um, we're on number two, right? Well, Huck said it was, that was number... my, yeah, oh, that was, was your my number, number two? two. So yeah. Uh, my number two is Death Loop. Frank already mentioned the other time loop game. Was there another one? There might have been three. I don't remember. But uh, I mean, uh, this one, the marketing it definitely was uh, like trying pretty hard to be stylistic and and cool. But I think the concept looks strong. And I had heard of this game previously, so um, I'm yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one. Yeah, I, I actually like the stylized trailer out of the a complete presentation. Mm -hmm. It felt the best to me out of everything that was there. It felt like it, it knew exactly what type of game it was and the marketing really matched it. And I have not played, I think it's the same people who did Dishonored or Dishonored 2, or they might be the same. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I think so. Looks kind of cool. I I am intrigued. Did not make my list, but. Was there, an, there was also an espionage element to it too, right? So yeah, a little bit. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't get a sense if it was that or if it was more of like a, an assassin type thing, but either way, there's a time right. loop and you're, you know, trying to figure out how to get through, you know, every time you restart the loop. Yes. Uh, my number two is Spider-Man Miles Morales. And again, I'm excited for the fact that it looks smaller. I'm probably one of the only people, but I, I think it's cool to kind of use a different character, put a new spin on everything, especially after into the spider verse and stuff like that, which was like so good. And I love how they integrated suit designs and ideas from other Spider-Man properties. So I'm hoping there's a big influence from that movie or like, uh, suits and other things. Cause I usually don't get into different suits and customizing characters, but 
Spider-Man was one game where that was really cool, including like the, the cartoon or comic version, the cell shaded one and other stuff. Like I actually, I enjoyed uh, experimenting with the different looks of Spider-Man in that game. So uh, I'm excited to do that with the Miles Morales version of Spider-Man. Uh, my number one, we already talked about the little devil inside. I really, Whoa. yeah. Number one, I should have backed it on Kickstarter. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really liked the art style. It was, it felt, I don't remember it looking exactly like this. I felt almost like they, like some sort of like paper mache type art like art looking stuff i don't know it, it was i couldn't put my finger on exactly what it was about it but it, it could it just run, had a, but to me it looked even slightly more low poly and stylized than the initial version okay yeah but it didn't look so low poly that you know you're thinking this looks a little cheap or like they're trying to like emulate ps1 type graphics or anything like that it it really has I mean, there's sharp edges, but it doesn't really come across as low poly. Uh, I like the humor in it that they showed in the trailer. Hooping. Uh, it can't there was beat pooping. it. <laughs> Huge. If he had a Vita in his hands, it would have been game of the decade. Oh, didn't even think about that. <laughs> Shitter trophies in the game. That would, amazing. that would have been way better than the Vita reveal in the Last of Us trailer. Come Absolutely. <laughs> But yeah, I really, I thought it looked great. I thought it looked almost like had elements of like Shadow of the Colossus, though it looked like there was more than just big, big bosses. And yeah, it just looks really, looks really good. And they've had so long to work on it. It's got to be polished by now, right? You think? It's got to be. <laughs> uh, there's still their original Twitter. I don't know if it's changed for Project LDI. Hadn't posted since December 2017. So I don't know if they have a new one or what's going on. Kind of reminds you of Moon Studios. Moon Studios website's kind of weird and they never update and do stuff like that. The developers of Ori. So uh, I'm excited for this game finally happening. I could not believe it. Sean, you're number one. Uh, well, my number one. Uh, GTA Five Enhanced Edition. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm what, sure uh, we'll talk about that in a second. There's but... memes about it and stuff like that, but <laughs> everyone was uh, like, "GTA Six, we're gonna see it and all this stuff." And Rockstar, everyone's like, "Oh my God, they're starting off with GTA Six and <laughs> <laughs> what the triple dip, the triple dip." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I and don't know. people will pay. People will pay. Definitely. I like. I kind of like the fact that a game is supporting, like, an online community for so long, and just kind of adding stuff to it. I think that's neat. But it was a bit of a letdown. I got to be honest. Yeah. Uh, no, my number one is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Thought this looked really cool. I think it's a franchise that you know it's it's been a while. It's time for a, a new one. And I think the mechanic is really cool. And I think from what I've seen, like the, it seems like it's going to be something that really shows off the SSD load speeds, you know, because you can just jump between worlds so quickly. Um, I there, mean, there's a bit of smoke and mirrors there though, where they said that oh, I didn't time. see that happening in gameplay. Anytime I oh. saw that concept in gameplay, it was literally teleporting within a world that already exists yeah it's like a grapple mechanic more which than... is interesting because when i was watching it it almost seemed like they slowed down the character i don't know if it's just like all the ratchet games the characters move that slow but to me it looks like they've slowed down the actual walking movement of ratchet perhaps to encourage you to teleport more or use these riffs which looks like an interesting mechanic it felt it looked a little weird I really need to play it to decide it. I mean, it's probably similar to the idea of teleporting in VR games and stuff like that. I would think is where they drew inspiration, but it yeah, could maybe. be good. I don't want to say it's, it's, it doesn't have potential, but I, I was probably my number six. If I had a six, um, so much stuff happening on screen. Look, yes. So 
uh, alive and, and like an exciting game. And I love those games. I did mention I've been playing the first one or I was trying to play the first one. Not the remake of the first one. The first one, first one. Oh, yeah. And it is painful. <laughs> there's no I've strafing. Never been able to get into it. The weapons are like there's only one useful weapon to me and aiming them is so annoying. Like that series has come so far. I, I may try to finish it and move to the second one. Cause that's where they start from what I've read to have strafing and some lock on stuff. But the first one, wow, that series has come a long way. And even like games that came out in early two thousands, how far control has come as like what's yeah. expected and just every game uses now crazy was was that one original playstation or was that playstation 2 playstation 2 okay so it did have the dual shocks it did already yep. so it's a it's a struggle i i don't know if i'll actually ever get back to it i i, I can't do it uh my number one horizon forbidden west no surprise here i also a kind of sub announcement that I saw online, they, they officially confirmed horizon zero dawn is coming to PC at some point. And I think this one as well coming to PC, uh, at least the article I read said that. So maybe I will get a chance to play it again with new trophies on PC. <laughs> Might have to buy a new $2,000 PC to make that happen. But... <laughs> Drop in the bucket. I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Uh, I might be okay though. This this PC is probably more powerful than a PS4, so I should be good. But I still think it looks very cool. The new creatures, the turtle looked the great. Turtle. Although you know, God of War has something very similar, but it still looked cool. And Ori, actually, the sequel to Ori had that as well. So, but the elephants. Mm-hmm. I looked away. What happened underwater? I need to rewatch it. What was there a shark or anything like that? I, I totally it was an alligator. Oh, al- alligators. What were the, the alligator equivalents in the first game? I can't remember what they're called. Something tooth. Anyway, mm, sawtooth. something like that. Yeah. I think the setting sounds really cool. San Fran and, the ocean aspect I already mentioned going full avatar two here. <laughs> and, uh, I think it looks cool. I, again, the story for the first one, I thought the first half of the story was much better than the second half. I am curious to revisit the story. Not really concerned about it though. For that game, it is mechanics and gameplay that I love and more of the same with new environments and looks and weapons. I'm in. Bring back that map. Good. That amazing map. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I got a couple honorable mentions <coughs> that I don't think were mentioned here. Well, we're not allowed honorable mentions, so let's just mention other things that were shown that we want to talk about it. Okay, these are just mentions then. <laughs> five. This is 5B. Five 5B. <laughs> five uh, so Destruction All-Stars I thought looked kind of interesting. Kind of seemed Second. like a anything for me look kind of like rocket league but i mean i don't totally understand what it is it's kind of like a demolition derby game but you can get out of the car too i mean generally i would not be into these kinds of games but just with a a unique concept i don't know it, it could be something that i could see catching on and being fun um goodbye volcano high what'd you guys think of this one this is kind of the one that was like looked fully 2D animated. And I mean, again, I, I don't totally know what the gameplay is. Like, it seems like it's more of a narrative based dialogue game. But I mean, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen more games that are just full on 2D animation in the style of like, you know, Cuphead or um, I guess the Nino Kuni games I've kind of done that. Yeah. South Park like, games to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I I also struggled with this one because it was so hard to tell what the game actually was. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really like the art style. I have a feeling it'll be more like almost like comic book style stop motion animation rather than like fluid 2D animation. 
But I don't know. There wasn't much to go on other than it seeming to be some sort of like monsters take on high school drama type mm-hmm. game, yeah. which could be really interesting. But the art style didn't do anything for me. I'm not writing it off, but art style also did nothing for me. I am out as of right now. <laughs> I'm uh, not writing it off, but I'm out <laughs> as of right now. I. I <laughs> I will try anything, especially if people say it's good. So I, uh, <laughs> uh, I, could, I, I could legit buy every one of those games. If it's a launch title, probably going to be a buy. But I, the art style was not vibing with me. I was somewhat intrigued by Jet the Far Shore. I think this is developed by Super Brothers and another company. Uh, I, I, I mean, this would be, I knew you would talk about this. But I mean, it's hard to tell what it is. It reminded me a bit of No Man's Sky, which again, I thought looked amazing at the time and then kind of came out, got bad reviews. I still haven't tried it, but apparently it is good now. So I should check it out. In VR. Um, people huh. aim for it in VR, man. Mm-hmm. It's, it's free on Game Pass right now. It just came to Game Pass. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, that's funny that you think it looks like No Man's Sky because I thought it looked like a shitty... Uh, side scrolling racing game with a horrible camera angle. <laughs> Ooh. Right? And then all they had was like the space storyline at the beginning. I don't think that's the game. I think it was like that flying mechanic they had. It was hmm. like the zoomed out camera angle. Maybe you're right. Maybe I mean the title I guess would imply some sort of racing game. Maybe that's more what it is, but I guess that's an indication that it's not the best trailer. Yeah. Um now, one other thing I'll mention. So I, the trailer for this to me, again, no idea what the game is, but just the world and the concept seemed kind of cool. Uh, Stray. Knew this was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems like it's set in a world where humans are dead and, and it's all robots, but then there's apparently a single cat roaming my, my the note, city. My notes say cat stranding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I thought I mean, it was pretty good. I mean, Annapurna's games are definitely interesting. I, most of them are pretty good. So I, I'll definitely check it out. It wasn't uh, at the top of my list. I liked the logo and I like the logo. Art stuff. <laughs> I did like the logo a lot. <laughs> right I now. think the universe, the universe definitely sounds interesting, but it's hard to tell what the game is. But I'm not yeah. into cat humor. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's about all I had. Do you guys have anything else? A couple of th- I We might as well cover some of the stuff. We've almost done it yep. all. Uh, yep. The uh, Let's start with Hitman 3. Looked okay. I haven't really played much of the other ones. Don't have much to say. Yeah, looked good. Um, Gran Turismo 7, which we had mentioned. Yeah, well, I guess that was on my list. I did get one. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, but the... Uh, the new menu system with your guide. I believe it was Sarah at the bottom. Yes, <laughs> Sarah. Interesting. Uh, I don't know. It, they were touting this new campaign. campaign? Yeah, which, they didn't show shit. What yeah, the hell? So, <laughs> the menus look really slick, like just with the cars. It looks great, but we'll see, I when guess. They were, and when they were driving, the physics on the cars seemed like pretty close like what to what you would expect though obviously without actually being in the driver's seat now this could be a game that could really take advantage of the haptic feedback on the controller so it could be interesting uh, on that level as well yeah i mean haptic feedback to me is we'll have to see what it is it just feels like nothing like another fun thing to say that games don't use and I hope I'm wrong. I hope they have cool ideas for it. But the coolest thing in that vein would be 3D touch with the switch and one, two switch is the only thing that really uses it. So uh, I hope I'm wrong. Let's get into bug snacks, which I've not played Octodad. I have to say, I, I liked the design of these food bugs obviously reminded of viva pinata and taking like 
food and creatures and but in a totally different way mashing them together the uh the sub cater the submarine caterpillar and like the dessert snails and all this stuff like very at cool first, like, cool at ideas. first i thought this was going to be uh like a viva pinata game like yeah, some sort yeah. of spin off on that but it it oh, like does actual, look interesting yeah i mean it's kind of unknown what it is at this point but i was definitely intrigued by the character designs and the I humor don't... seemed seemed good too yeah looks it's pretty rare. good i'm interested probably the the biggest announcement that we haven't talked about was a demon souls remaster mm-hmm. which a lot of people wanted bloodborne 2 to be announced at this thing <laughs> so i bought the original demon souls i couldn't get into it as we've talked about on the show, every one of these souls like games chipped away at me until I eventually got hooked by Neo and then Sekiro. I feel like, and then I watched this. What's the video you had talked to me about for final fantasy Huck, the spoiler. Oh, the easy allies, uh, review spoiler cast or something like that. So they talked a lot about the storytelling and, the one guy was all about these levels of storytelling Mm -hmm. and they kept saying, this is bloodborne level of of everything. This is bloodborne level of storytelling. And (laughs) you know what? I kind of got to figure out what, what people are talking about with bloodborne. I know. I actually, after watching that and at watching this Steven souls, uh, trailer, I went by put bloodborne on hold at the old library for whatever it opens back up. Once I finish God of war, I think that might be the next one I, I get into. Uh, but this looks pretty cool. Not it's more of a cinematic trailer, but should be good. A few more things here. I was intrigued by the new Capcom game Pragmata, which was the astronaut and the little girl. Mm-hmm. What game did I think it was going to be for a second? The style of the spacesuit. I almost thought. <laughs> no, I almost thought that was Horizon for a second like it was gonna do a huge leap in terms of what it's about and maybe they moved it to like the the polygon astronaut suit reminded me of the animal designs and some of the stuff in horizon zero zero dawn you know what just popped in my head for that actually was uh was it metal gear revengeance oh yeah that's a good one rising revenge wear like a triangle helmet type thing yeah but it's capcom new ip Mostly cinematic, but 2022 though, also so oh, okay. quite far out. Sure. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, which I believe was at Bethesda's E3 last year. I and think so. Yeah. They leaned into the idea that the SSD is helping them fully realize their version of Japan or Tokyo specifically. So Something looked off with this game to me and I, I rewatched it a couple times and I think it just has a really narrow field of vision on the camera. Cause it just feels like you're walking down a corridor or something. I, at first I thought it was, what's that? It's a horror game, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's kind of like a psychological thriller horror game. Yeah. Action says, okay. So it, I don't know. At first I thought it was maybe cause it looks almost like, it's got some sort of like magic first person shooter aspects to it over guns. But I, after watching it again, I think it's just that that field of view on that camera is just so narrow that it, it just feels a little off. It just makes you feel a little claustrophobic. And maybe that is a design decision and like an art direction thing. But to me, it, uh, I don't like not being able to see in games. I don't like have to rely on turning the camera, especially with a controller quickly to be able to see everything. So I wasn't really, interested in this one and this is the game that uh the director left uh ikumi nakamura she was as part of the e3 presentation and people really liked her and then she left shortly after that so i, mean, mm. I don't know what the state of the game is looks okay uh odd world soul storm so the return of odd world which yep. looked kind of cool there were some spectacle moments like where the ship falling that looked interesting and kind of taking that series into the next generation. The cinematic stuff at the beginning looked kind of dated to me. It looked pretty limited. 
I've liked those games. I haven't played the original or the remake. I, I really should get on that, but I liked the one that launched with the original Xbox and I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Never played an odd world game. Maybe this will be the one. Possibly. I think one I think one was free on PS plus one time and I gave it a try and could not get into it at all. So I have not I have no interest in this game. I thought it looked visually pretty good, but I have no desire to try this one out. But the guy who introduced the video, Lauren Lanning, I believe is his name. He uh he had done one of those Ars Technica stories that I had watched recently talking about oh, the, yeah. first, the first odd world. So had a little more um knowledge of what was going on and then i cannot remember what this game is i'm gonna look it up it's the last one on the list solar ash mm. yeah is this from the hyper Light drifter yeah oh is yeah. that who i mean it makes sense now that i look at it yeah yeah it basically looks like kind of on my radar kind of looked like hyper Light drifter in 3d yeah looks kind of cool i recently tried hyper Light drifter and could not really get into it i played it for about an hour and just the aimlessly walking around kind of did not jive with me now did the name change because i'm seeing old images here that say solar ash kingdom and then the new reveal is just solar ash so i never even heard of this game beforehand so i'm not sure uh yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like March in 2019, it was called Solar Ash Kingdom, and all the new stuff is just saying Solar Ash. Was not on my radar, though. Looks kind of cool. It's also Annapurna. Uh, so they're definitely getting or launching more games or publishing more games, which is cool. They tend to publish interesting stuff, which is a good thing. But overall, lots of new stuff. I'm excited. Certainly, a lot of original say, IP too, right? Like, but the weird thing is, Xbox has had a lot of original, like new stuff too, and I did not feel as passionate about it uh, after that one. So, yeah, the Microsoft ones felt a little more generic, I think. But and I felt like I was getting them all confused. Whereas this one, most of them had an identity. I kind of remember them. Yeah, I agree. the The only game we didn't touch on was that Godfall game. Which kind of oh. reminded me of like Warframe or something like that. Like it kind of gave me that sort of MMO combat, like action combat type vibe, which is also holiday 2020. So I don't know what that's going to be a PS5 exclusive, but they're targeting obviously launch window. Right. Yeah, I, I'm not seeing. Uh, so we're a tight 75 person at team. They've worked on a lot like, ratchet and clank god of war destiny 2 horizon so it looks like they've done a lot of contract work helping out other games uh at least on their website they're not listing other stuff that they've like developed made themselves yeah developed yeah is the term uh so <laughs> yeah, looks interesting definitely not the top of my list but the, everything had potential like there wasn't a single thing that i was like what a bust except for gta 5 but I mean, that's, that's a known thing. It, it wasn't even necessarily that it's a bust. It was just um, anticipation versus delivery when you see the Rockstar logo in one of these things. Yeah. And such a weird way to start. Like, <laughs> yeah, big time. It almost feels like there is uh, maybe exclusivity deals in the works for GTA 6. And part of the agreement was showing this first or doing something like <laughs> Milk, maybe milk that Sony. Never money. know, because it seems like a weird thing to lead with if it's going to be underwhelming. I Which was I especially worried when it had the little PS4 logo in the corner. I was <laughs> like, "Oh no, what are you doing? Like, this is a PS5 event. What are you doing? Showing PS4 stuff right away?" But I guess, I guess one it, you could justify it with it started with like a look back in all the PlayStation yes. consoles, and maybe it represents the transition from PS4 to PS5. Oh, maybe. I'll stretch and give it that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, I did make me want to play GTA five, which I never really got into. And I want to play the online, but I haven't played. I've, I beat the original game. There was an IGN article recently about developers picking their favorite games. I think of the last generation or perhaps all time. I don't know. A lot of people 
had GTA five. I was surprised. Really? Huh. All right. I think that's it for, uh, I, I got one little tiny Uh-oh. thing, tiny thing. All did right. Guys, one more thing. Did you guys spot, uh, that they may, they put in what look, what appears to be the start screen for PS five. Yeah. With the home right, button right before Astrobot, and they had like all the audio and stuff. So yeah, I was not, not a fan of the, the intro music or the button press. Like it was a little oh, too, like- a little it too had, like, fantasy for me. An updated version of the traditional theme, only with a light source in the top left corner. Thought it looked pretty cool. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> of course we are. You know, I'm a, place, I'm a PlayStation fan, man. It, that's all there is to it. <laughs> but if we're going to be honest, I always switch with the product. When Xbox One X came out, or Xbox one, I should say, I thought it had a better, like a better, uh, system features. I thought the games were better. You could put a external hard drive in. I thought there was a lot of cool stuff. Eventually halfway through that generation, PlayStation clearly took over for me because they added support, like external storage, adding VR and so many amazing exclusive games. Like, even though I say it's over, Microsoft could win me over with the the console experience. So I am not a fanboy in the sense that I'm committed to one thing, unwilling to waver or change. I I will go where the experience takes me, the best experience. And we mentioned it, you mentioned it, Huck, but Games Anywhere or xCloud could be a huge factor for that. Yeah, they didn't an- announce anything with regards to that. I still don't really understand what's going on. I actually signed up for PlayStation Now for a couple months because they had a a deal on it, and I kind of wanted to check it out. And I don't really understand what's going on with PlayStation Now. Like they have, I didn't know that they actually had PlayStation Four games on there, a handful of them, but they have some currently. They have Spider Man, and I think they have Control, a few other things. So, I mean, why it just feels like they're not pushing it at all. And it's certainly not a great deal if you pay full price for it. I don't understand why they don't bundle it with PlayStation Plus or something, but maybe there's more to come. You never know. I want to say overall for this conference, I thought it was really well done. I thought it ran maybe a little long and some of the trailers were a little long, but I also like that when they had their little developer talking moments, they were short and they didn't drag on with this huge explanation of what you were about to see. They kind of gave you a quick little tidbit and then just got right to the games, which was really a, like a refreshing moment for like an E3 presentation. If this is what this was technically supposed to be. And I, I thought this would be a good way to get, you know, big drops of information going forward. And I think I think Sony did a pretty good job overall. Well, we've got EA next week, right? Yeah. So and the Steam, see what they do. The Steam Summer Game Fest starts up, so there's going to be a lot of free demos for stuff to check out. Yeah, we're gonna try and check out some stuff. I think that's the goal. The Last of Us is The Last of Us Part Two is coming out though, so. Next yeah. Friday. Yeah. Might have to skip out on recording. I'm going to be knee deep. <laughs> um, I'll be playing. It. I'll wake we... up. I'll wake up to record. I'll play all night and then I'll <laughs> wake up just for breakfast. We'll record for breakfast. <laughs> Do we know if Nintendo has something in the next month or two? No. They haven't said. Not that I'm aware of. Hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of Wii U games they haven't converted to Switch yet. Got to see what those are. (laughs) Well, there's the big rumor that they have a bunch of Mario remasters coming out, like the Mario Galaxy games and stuff. And I'm interested in that. Got to get that Animal Crossing DLC. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Is that it, Frank? Uh, I'm not going to mention anything in what we played. I'm good. Do you guys have anything you're burning to talk about? No. no. Okay. 
Uh, that'll do it for today. Then check out on Twitter, game junk podcast. Yeah. Right. Yep. Facebook.com <laughs> forward slash game junk. Mm-hmm. Film junk on Twitter. My angry commute and equilibrium sis on Twitter. And we'll be back with some EA news or maybe some other stuff next week. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. See ya. See ya.